Okay, so now that we've got this all set up, the thing that we've got to do is now create tool paths. So I'm going to switch over to the CAM module, and now we can uh, start creating it. So what I want to do is create a new setup. So setup, new setup. And the first thing we're going to do is define our origin. So we want to set the direction of X. So I do that by clicking on the back half. Notice you can pick the back half or the front half of these arrows. Click the back half of the arrow and give it something to reference just to get the direction oriented. And then I'll click the front half to switch it. Then I can click on this point right here and say I want to align it to the lower left corner of my stock. Another thing that you should do is select on model. This way we're just going to define exactly what parts we're cutting out. Maybe you have some extra bodies, extra parts, uh, that reference model of the stock, things like that that you don't necessarily need to be computing toolpaths for. We just want to do it for this. So we've selected our models. Now we're going to go over to our stock and we're going to give it a specific size. So we know that this is um, 96 by 48. And then the height, again, this is the other place. So you need to change it over in the model on that ply parameter and then here in height we need to set it as well so here we're going to set it to something that we measure so again you want to measure your stock very precisely and then input it here and this is just another small thing you want to say offset from the bottom in minus z zero um, as long as this and your ply parameter were the same it wouldn't matter but it's still good practice i think We'll do that, and now we've got kind of the base setup for where is my origin point and how is my stock defined. One thing I like to do is to just kind of name the setup with the tool I'm going to use. So I know this is going to be for a shop bot, and it's going to be a three. I'm going to use a three eighths um, compression end mill. So. That's just way, if I'm going to use multiple tools, what I'll do is I'll create a setup for each tool and then all the operations for that tool will go into one setup. It makes it really easy to post it out in groups and then just run one program at a time on the ShopBot. I just like to run one program for each tool, do the tool change, then run the next program. For me, that's what's been working really well. So now I'm going to go ahead and create uh, the first operation. The first operation is going to be to create a 2D pocket and we'll do that here. So I'm going to create a 2D pocket to cut out all those blind pockets. We'll pick a tool. In this case, I'm not really worried about getting the exact parameters of the tool, um, just because I just want a generic, kind of a generic 3 8 cutter. Because um, all I'm really worried about for right now on the router is just getting the tool diameter right. And then I can set some um, the spindle speed. I can set my feed rate. In this case, I'm going to use 60. Um, and then I could set uh, the lead-in feed rates as well. And it's going to do a little calculation for me and let me know what my uh, feed per tooth or my tooth load is as well, which is kind of nice. For geometry, now what I need to do is pick the exact pockets that I want to cut out. So here, I'm going to pick these pockets. So again, all my blind pockets. Now this happens sometimes. You gotta remember, you gotta notice with this arrow is on the outside of the pocket. You need to click it and it'll switch the direction. It's basically saying which am I going inside or outside on that edge you just picked. And I want to go on the inside. So you need to make sure that on all of these pockets that you pick, that again happened again. You just want to always make sure that you're cutting to the inside of the pocket not the outside and we'll get these last two from this part so remember there's six on the on the one and then um, again I need to flip this and two on this one so the first thing I'm going to do is my blind pockets that I want to completely clear out okay heights we don't really need to change anything here under passes there's a couple things you definitely want to change um, we want to do right conventional milling so climb milling uh, more for like a very rigid CNC machine doing high precision metal cutting. The other thing we want to do is a step over. So if you want, you could just step over by the entire tool width, or you could cut this down. It's a personal preference. 
I believe there. Stock to leave, if we were gonna come back and do a finishing operation later, we would maybe wanna leave a little bit of stock to cut off if we were doing like a 3D contour thing or something. In this case, we're just profiling out these pockets, so we don't need to leave any stock. But what we do wanna do is take multiple depths. So here I'm gonna set the step down to be uh, half the cutter diameter, seems to be about the rule of thumb. And then also for a finishing step down, we don't really need to do an extra finishing pass here. So I'll just also set that to be um, the regular step down that I want. And that way we'll just basically just take steps all the way down to the bottom of the pocket in half the cutter uh, diameter. And then the last thing is over on linking. One thing that I like to do here, um, ramp, this is how the how it's gonna, the tool's gonna enter the material. And you can see a nice preview of, of all of these things. You can see a nice preview if you just hover over um, the option. You can see what they are, what options you have. So you can see here, pre-drill, plunge, helix, etc. So helix is nice if you're trying to enter into a very, very hard material like aluminum or something. But in this case, we're just going into plywood. So we'll just do a straight plunge. And it just is much faster. And with that, we'll say OK. And we get a preview of the tool pass. So you can see here what the tool is going to do as it goes from pocket to pocket. So the next thing I want to do is cut all these through pockets. And I'm going to do this by using a 2D contour. So a 2D contour will come down and just cut the profile. So if the cutter was less than half the width of this pocket, then you'd actually end up with a little sliver in the middle, in which case you might want to use a pocket. It doesn't really matter. You could use a pocket here or a contour. Um, really, it's going to accomplish the same thing in this case. Um, but again, I would say 2D, 2D contour. And I've already got it set up here so that you don't have to watch me pick all of the pockets. But again, I'm using the same cutter. Uh, set my um, feeds and speeds. Under the geometry, you can see that I've picked that. What you always want to do is just pick one edge on each profile, and it'll find the profile. And then again, also make sure that the arrow is on the inside of all of these pockets, um, not the outside, or else you'll end up with the cutter going around the outer profile. Uh, so in this case, there's 18 of them. Heights, nothing to change. Passes, uh, same. Same adjustments that you make here that you made on the previous pocket. So I want to definitely say I want to make a uh, right conventional milling. I want to set the maximum step down to be a half the cutter diameter. And um, same for the finishing. And then on linking, I just turned off ramp. If you want, you could ramp in. doesn't matter. Um, it would be maybe nicer if you did a little ramp on the way in. You could say you want to come in at an angle. And you can see the result there of those pockets. So now what I need to do is cut out uh, the actual pieces, the outer profile. So again, I'm going to use a 2D contour to do that. Uh, by default, it's picking the last tool I use, which is good for me here. Then for the geometry, I'm going to pick all of the contours. So it's these profiles here. Should zoom in and make sure that these are going in the right direction. So again, some of these were on the uh, wrong side. And here, all good. So now I've created, I've selected all the profiles that I want. Now on this one, I wanna do something else a little different. I wanna add some tabs. So we're gonna add tabs to keep the parts from flying off once they're fully cut out. And we can either do rectangular or triangular. I'm going to do a triangle. I'm going to do uh, 3 quarters by 0.185, so just under my um, step height. And I could either say by distance, which would put these every 3 inches on any side that's at least 3 inches long, or I'm going to say by at points. And so in this case, what I can do is I can actually come in and I can just specify, I'll just pick like say four points on each part that I want, where I want to put the tabs at. And this way you can kind of specify it yourself. So fast forward for a second and then we're, you can see I've picked all of the places for my tabs. So all those white dots 
represent where a tab is going to be and like you just I've just placed them so in this case I've got 28 four per part um, under passes again make sure you set it to write conventional milling and we're gonna set the the depths again so multiple depths going half the cutter and then under linking um, just really taking the defaults here as well and with that, we'll say OK. And now you can see, again, the blue lines represent a preview of the tool path. And you can kind of zoom in. You can see here the tool is going to take that um, little jump right there, the little jog to make the tabs. Looks pretty good. Once you've created all the tool paths, the nice thing to do is to be able to simulate it. So if you select an individual tool path, you can simulate just the one. Or you can select the entire setup folder and press Simulate. And you can turn on the stock, which I like to do. And what that's going to do, it's going to let you. Sh it's going to show you actually the material being removed when you press play. It'll show you the material being removed. You can do things like skip just right to the next operation. So done with the pockets, and now it's doing the through pockets. Again, this is like nice to just see what's happening. I've caught many errors by looking at the simulation and realizing the tool is going and cutting somewhere that I didn't expect or uh, it's cutting the wrong side or it's not finishing where you thought it was going to be finishing. Uh, another thing you can do is just kind of jump to the end. So after it's done everything and then you can take a look at what you're going to be left with. So here we can get a nice visual on, you know, where are my tabs? Are they in the right place? Do they look good? Does it look like they're all done? Uh, is there a big chunk of material left in here that I wasn't expecting? All those types of the problems that you might find um, once you're cutting, you can find here in the simulation. And once you're done simulating, same thing. Again, you can either post out an individual operation or you can post out the entire setup, which is why I like to do one per material or one per tool. And now I'll pick this and I will say post process. Here I can select either um, any post processor. In this case, we have two for ShopBot. One that'll create open SBP files, so ShopBot language, and then regular G code, the ShopBot ISO post. And if you want to go in and adjust here in the properties, if you have some specific properties that you want to adjust for your specific machine, you can change those here. In this case, I'm going to take the default and export this G code. And we'll overwrite the one that I have. Say, save it off somewhere where I know where it's going to be. And then, you know, if you're not doing this on the machine that you actually have hooked up to your ShopBot, then you can then just take that, put it on USB key or whatever, move it over to the machine, and load it into the ShopBot controller and run the job. All right, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Uh, please leave comments if you have any questions, and I'll keep an eye on it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and let me know what you think. Thanks.